Hey kids, it's time for another episode of Kitty Cat Gaming with your host, Mortimer! KKG! KKG! Yay! Hey everybody, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Kitty Cat Gaming. We are playing Dream Daddy, a dad dating simulator. And we are going Robert only this game. We are currently on our second date with Robert, and it's so romantic. We're at makeout point, and he just handed us a knife. Um, so I'm not really sure what that's for, but we're finding out. Huh. Have you ever whittled before? Considering I'm not a grandpa, no. Mm. What do you mean by that? Well, I just thought you would have a block of wood shipped to you along with your first social security check. Oh. Morty, I'll have you know that whittling is a time-honored tradition enjoyed by both young and old alike. That you're dismissing it before we even tried it speaks volumes about your character. My grandpa whittled. <laughs> However, because I've gotten to know you for some time and have come to think of us as friends, I'm willing to attribute it to some ignorance instead of malice. What I'm trying to say is, go get that stick. Rubber motions to a good-looking stick on the ground, perfect for potential whittling. I pick it up. The most important thing to remember while whittling is to cut with the grain, not against it. If you cut against the grain, the wood is going to splinter. Isn't that the most? Isn't that the most important thing? Safe? Isn't the most important thing? Safety. I... Oh. No. Getting hurt comes with the territory. Look at my damn hands. I look at his damn hands. They're calloused and covered in little white scars. They're very nice hands. Yeah. You can't make stick omelet a stick omelet without breaking a few hand eggs. Oh. Knife that wood. Oh no, we have a mini game. Knife that wood. Oh my god. Uh. Uh, 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 uh. I made a pencil. That's a good start. What is it? Uh, sharp stick, pencil, knitting needle. Sharp stick. Careful, don't poke yourself with that. You made a sharp stick. Hooray! That's in our inventory now. Oh, great. We have to make something else now? Okay. Ready? Ha, 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 ha. Ah, I made a popsicle stick. Tell me about this one. Flat worm, tongue depressor, or popsicle stick? Tongue depressor. I should put that in my first aid kit. Never know when you might need one. You made a tongue dispresser. <laughs> my god. Uh, what will we make this time? Uh-oh, uh, oh, a toothpick. What's the story here? Oh my god, that big block of wood. We just got this. Toothpick, bubble popper, or something to make me look tougher. Uh, something to make me look tougher. It's working. I think you could take me in a fight. Probably. You made tough guy accessory. Yay! Oh my god, another one? Okay, ready? An egg? What's this? Chicken nugget. I don't know. Ouija board planchette. Ouija board planchette. Now all you need to do is carve up the board and we're all set. Also, maybe carve a ghost? You made a Ouija board planchette. It's missing the hole in the middle. Oh my god, more? Alright, what are we making this time? Uh, nice form. What's it supposed to be? A self-portrait? Louisiana? Or it's you? Uh, it's you. You really captured my likeness. I'm impressed. You made Robert, I guess. Oh my god, it's adorable. It does look like a chicken nugget. All right, ready? Uh, chopstick? Interesting, what do we have here? Chopstick for a righty, chopstick for a lefty, chopstick ambidextrous. That one. It's a stick. You made a chopstick. <laughs> oh my god. Another one? Oh my god, how many of these are there? Do I have to hit the skip button? Is this gonna go on for forever? Oh, you made a duck. Swan, duck, or a new friend? New friend. He's beautiful. I'm happy for you. You made a new friend! Yes! We made a new friend! Oh my god, no more. No more! I don't want to whittle anymore! Oh, we made a horse. Look at that. The big old dog, the spirit of the Mustang, or is Sir Horsington the Brave? Sir Horsington the Brave. A brave and noble name for a brave and noble creature. You made a beautiful gift for Amanda. Aw, that is nice. Okay, we did it. I... Robert and I sit in silence for a while. While carving out pieces of wood, I think I'm getting the hang of this. It's actually kind of relaxing. I glance over to see what Robert's working on. He's carving a smaller wooden knife? Ah. While I'm distracted, the knife slices into my thumb. Blood gushes all over my little wood carving. Um, I think that's all we can say is um. Robert is lost in carving and doesn't notice me bleeding everywhere. Uh, Robert still doesn't notice. 
Robert, I'm dying. I'm bleeding to death. Robert finally looks over. He reaches into his jacket again. Jesus, how much stuff does this guy keep in there? And pulls out a red bandana. He wraps it around my thumb. Hold tight. He hops off his truck and I can hear him rummaging around in his car. He comes back a moment later with some well-stocked first aid kit. Robert carefully wipes all the blood off my hand and swipes a bit of antiseptic into the cut. With surprising gentleness, he places a bit of gauze on the wound and wraps it all up. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. He hands me what's left of this tube of antiseptic. Make sure to keep that cut clean. It's oddly touching and and a little sexy. I guess I'm a real whittler now. That you are. Be careful, though. They're attracted to the smell of bud, blood. Wait, what? What's attracted to the smell of blood? Cryptids. Tons of my hair, you know? Cryptids? Like Mothman and stuff? Mothman is bullshit, but yeah, this town's a hotbed for cryptozoological occurrences. You're joking. Mm. Oh, how I wish I were. I'm a skeptic myself. Or at least I thought I was. There are things in these woods that we can't possibly comprehend. I think about my entire time in the city, aside from the occasional stray coyote. I don't think it's too bad. Oh. You ever hear of that Dover ghost? I don't think so. Oh my god, what's oh. a Dover ghost? Well, let me tell you a story. I was out in the woods here on a weekend camping trip with Betsy. You don't know Betsy, but she's a big pup. Pitbull. Real intimidating. I feel safe around her. First night goes out without incident. I get some solitude. Betsy gets to pee wherever she wants. All good stuff. Second day, I get the idea into my head that I can hike deeper into the woods. Probably against my better judgment, but hey, we're just having a fun camping trip, right? So me and Betsy start marching in the morning. Whoa, whoa. It gets a little late. We set up camp, but it's different this night. Real quiet. I can't hear the birds, the crickets, the squirrels. Nothing. Dead silent. Mm. Then it happens. I hear the most unholy growl I've ever heard in my life right outside my tent. Me and Betsy, we go to investigate. We look around the clearing. Nobody's there. <sighs> But then there's this feeling, not sure if I can quite describe it, I know someone, something, is watching us. Bessie, though, she's scared, never seen her like that. And when she's scared, I know that I should be too, and I see it in the distance. A man, but something that didn't know that it was a man was supposed to look like, it made it. It just looked wrong. Big, arms too long for its body, black eyes, it just stood there and stared at me. Then it disappears. I hear one yelp from Betsy and I turn around to check on her, but she's gone, into thin air. I didn't sleep at all in my tent that night, and I don't think I've ever slept right since. Uh, that's terrible, or you're lying? Uh, that's terrible. Wow, Robert. Oh. I'm so sorry. They say that if you listen close in quiet nights, nights just like tonight, you can hear the howl of the Dover ghost. A howl resonates through the woods. It doesn't sound like a regular howl. It's so guttural. Even from far away, something about it makes my skin crawl. Uh -huh. Okay, Robert, real funny. I turn to look at Robert. He's white as a sheet. You're messing with me, right? Really? I was messing with you, up until literally just now. I totally made that camping story up. I strained my eyes to scan the forest line, trying to see where the howl originated from. Off in the distance, I can see something. It's so far away. I barely can make out a shape. It looks human, but it's dragging something. Um, do you see that? We should go. Oh my god. Robert and I slowly back away and get into the truck. He turns on the headlights so we make a slow crawl away, back onto the road. I'm too scared to look back. What was that? Whoa, whoa. The Dover ghost, I guess. He chuckled nervously. This time he doesn't seem like he's messing with me. Or maybe someone illegally dumping garbage on the wildlife preserve? Yeah, that's the story we'll tell ourselves. We sit in si silence for a little while longer and the fear of whatever was slowly subsiding as we get closer to the city. Uh -huh. Thanks for coming out. This was fun. Uh -huh. I'm sorry I haven't been in touch. I've just been in a way lately. I had to get out of the house. Aw. Yeah. Had to be around somebody. You doing okay, man? Mm. <coughs> Robert thinks for a second and lights another cigarette. Oh. Oh. Been doing a lot of thinking. He takes a long drag. Mm -hmm. As I get older, I feel more and more that I'm just drowning in the sea of regret. I was so busy chasing after these things that I thought would make me happy. I didn't even think about anyone else. All I cared about was myself. I didn't even oh. think... Robert stops. I wait for him to finish his thought, but he just stares at the road. Maybe I'm just built like this. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I do it to myself. Maybe it's my own choice and I'm unhappy as I am. I try to think of something to say. I remember all the times in my life when I've been sad. And there's a great many of them. But there was always a light at the end of the tunnel. Something I held on to that kept me going. But there's something so resigned about the way Robert's talking. That sucks. I'm glad you told me. Or maybe we deserve to be eaten by the Dover ghost. I'm glad you told me. It must have taken a lot for you to want to tell somebody this. Mm -hmm. You're a mysterious guy, Robert. You don't have to be. Do you ever... Oh. Wish you were a better father? I think about it for a second. All the time. 
You can read all the parenting books you want, but nothing will ever prepare you for raising a child. There's so much stuff I regret or wish that I could have done better, but I don't have the answers. I don't know if anyone does. It's funny, I look at you and your relationship with your daughter, and it seems perfect. It isn't. At least you're there for her. I stare out the window at the blur of passing trees. I just hope I'm a better father to my kids than my dad was to me. What did your dad do? It's more about what he didn't do. He was quiet, stoic. Don't think he ever once told me that he led me. He cared more about his work than he ever did about me or my mom. That's really sad. Do you hate him? No, I used to. But after I became a parent, I just kind of feel bad for him. He missed on the whole childhood, my whole childhood. When I think about all that, all the happiest moments of my life, they're all with Amanda and Alex, and he just wasn't there. I guess Alex is dad. I hurt like hell when I had to leave him to die in that Bel Belarusian prison. Oh, what? I turn and smile at him. No, he just retired in Florida with my mom. We go there every Christmas. <laughs> oh, he liked that. We both break out into laughter. He pats me on the shoulder. We drive the rest of the way in silence, listening to the radio and watching the bright lights of the city grow bigger. Oh, well, that's nice. Robert drops me off at my place. As I'm about to close the passenger door, I realize that I still have Robert's pocket knife in my jacket. I pull it out and offer it back to him. You hold on to that. Never know when you might need it. Night, Robert. Have a safe drive home. Robert smirks, then pulls away. He then immediately pulls into his driveway, which is one over from mine. He gets out and waves. Oh, that's cute. I tiptoe into the house, careful not to wake Amanda up. Whoa, where'd you come in from? I look around and spot Amanda coming out of the kitchen with a glass of water. I thought you were sleeping. Oh, uh, Robert woke me up to go cryptid hunting. You know, the Mothman is bullshit, right? Amanda, Link, you know what? It's fine. Huh. I think about the conversation I had with Robert in the car as Amanda starts walking towards her room. Hey, Amanda? Huh. She stops. I love you. Hmm. It's weird when you say that outright and it's sincere like that, but I love you too. Night. I chuckled to myself and I finally decided to go to bed. Oh, that was cute. Oh, that day went really well. Um, So let's see what our score was. S rank, please. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Wow, that's a huge score. S rank, oh, woo! Uh, we did great. Um, so next time on the next episode of Kitty Cat Gaming, we're gonna do our third date with Robert, which I think is the final date. Um, so be sure to the subscribe button so you guys don't miss it, and I'll see you guys all next time. Bye, everybody!